Hey there, and welcome back to the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show, a place of inspiration, education, and hope for a kinder, healthier, and more sustainable world. If you'd like to donate to, advertise on, or sponsor this program, uh, I'd like to invite you to just go to my website or email me directly. My website is TeresaNicasio.com, and my email address is just Teresa at TeresaNicasio.com. And Teresa, in, in my case, Teresa is with an H, so it's T-H-E-R-E-S-A, and Nicasio is with an N like Nancy, one C and two S's, so it's N-I-C-A-S-S-I-O dot com. On average, HealthyLife.net has over one and a half million listeners each month, uh, syndicated and simulcast over 130 countries with such a great exposure. It's a wonderful way to spread the word about your awesome products and services. I can't tell you enough how happy I am that you've tuned in today, especially since on today's program we're going to be talking all about love, which is one of my favorite topics. I have a little story I wanted to share with you about that. You know, probably about 16, I don't know, 16, 17 years ago, uh, a lot of you know about me, you know, my journey and how I was in, I had a lot of health problems and was quite disabled. But in the midst of those dark days, um, my four-year-old daughter, well, she, she was four-year-old, now she's 20, uh, but she, she said to me, she's like, Mama, she was, I, I know you're a doctor, but, but you're not a body doctor like Dr. Judy. You know, what, what kind of doctor are you? And so I started talking to her. You know, when you know, we're, we're a mental health professional, it's a little different world, right? But I was just putting it in her language, and I was saying, you know, sometimes people are sad, or, or you know how when our dog died, how you were sad, and, you know, we're just kind of walking through that process, uh, or maybe sometimes people have a hard time getting along, or, or, or maybe they want to have a baby and they can't, or, you know, whatever. So basically at a certain point she says, oh, I get it. You're a love doctor. <laughs> so I thought I would share that because today's all about love. And also because today I'm inviting another love doctor on the show to, to share some really wonderful information with you about uh, love and romance and so forth. But before I talk about, uh, before I do a formal introduction of Dr. Susan Edelman, I'm so excited to have her on, um, I'd like to also give you a little teaser about next week's show where we're going to have Ricky Heller on. She's uh, the best-selling author of Living Candida Free, and she's going to be talking about her story and also some of the things she's learned along her journey of um, moving to the other side of Candida, which is, if you don't know what Candida is, you'll learn more about that, but also um, those of you who do know, know that it really is a nasty fungal condition that uh, that we all have candida, but when we have overgrowth, it can really it can really um, be a bugger in, in our lives. So uh, it's going to be a great show. You're not going to want to miss that one. And I want you to always remember that if you happen to miss the live broadcast of any of my shows, um, that uh, it will, you know will be streamed several more times on a HealthyLives.net network, uh, but it also will be available within one to two days, typically, uh, of the initial broadcast um, as a recorded podcast. And then, uh, you know, a couple months later or so, I will also be uh, providing it as a YouTube, which you will see on my website if you haven't already, that I have a lot of the embedded uh, YouTubes and, and links to the YouTube videos. But anyway, all that, all that good stuff, all you need to do is go to the website, and it's all right there. You just The links are all there. I make it very easy because, not you know, being in my 50s, you know, mid-50s, we uh, check Technology sometimes can be tough, so I wanted to make it easy enough for people like me to uh, to access. Anyway, so let's shift to today's show now. Uh, we're going to be talking about the very touchy subject, yes, touchy, of love and sex. Uh, psychiatrist Dr. Susan Edelman is here with us today, and um, she's, you know, I talk about on this show, I love to invite people who are also brave as well as brilliant, uh, you know, leaders, courageous, all that good stuff. So she took on this hot potato because this, this, what uh, Susan, uh, Dr. Susan is talking about is um, kind of the elephant in the living room, I think, in our culture right now. And she wrote a book called Be Your Own Brand of Sexy. And it really, you know, from a critical acclaim, it's already won 14 book awards since its release. Um, so as well as being a board-certified psychiatrist of 30 years in private practice, Dr. Susan Edelman is also an adjunct clinical associate professor at Stanford University in the Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences. 
as I mentioned, you know, she's a love doctor like myself at heart. Dr. Susan is passionate. She really wants to help both women and men get what they want in relationships. And it's really, you know, there's a lot of things that she's, she's putting out there and some great information, but I'd say that's the core of her stick. Uh, I want to point out that while Susan's book has a you know, really a strong focus on relationships between men and women, with a particular emphasis on women's experiences of angst, heartache, sexuality, and confusion around sexuality. Uh, her message really is equally relevant uh, for same-sex relationships. Uh, so if you're out there listening, I want you to know that this show is still relevant for you. Um, and also it speaks to the struggles that men have and the effects of our changing dating culture uh, that it has on you as well. If you're men listening, it's also this show is for you as well. This is not just for women, um, but Dr. Uh, Edelman's uh, she has particular expertise around women's women's health, women's psychology, and so forth. Uh, today, uh, Dr. Susan, she's going to be, you know, I like to think about it, is taking off her gloves and not only going to be challenging you to question everything that you think you know about dating, but she's also going to invite you to reclaim your power as you move forward searching for love by listening to your own gut instead of doing what you think you should do because you've been programmed by the media and others to believe it's normal and that it's what's expected in the dating world. So Susan's also going to talk about stepping fully into your sexy, confident self uh, relishing in the deliciousness of slowly and sensually uh, opening your heart to a world of love and romance that maybe you've never thought was possible. This is going to be fun, guys. Okay, uh, thank you for joining us today, Susan. Oh, it's so great to be with you today, Teresa, and I love that we're love doctors, according to your daughter. Yeah, isn't that the best? Yes. <laughs> I actually, when I, I came out of the closet about being a love doctor, I, I, I bought a stethoscope and and um, uh, one of my when I was a speaker at a, at a big conference, a wellness conference, and I was on the women's stage, and I wore that and, and I and I put that out there in the world, and it's kind of like one of our family's little little secrets for for a very long time. So it's fun to share it with with the world because it really is. Yeah, if you think about it, it really is at the core of what we do. Is yeah, I'm a psychologist of 30 years. You're a psychiatrist of 30 years. I think that's kind of neat that we've been doing this similar length of time. It is. It's, yeah. it's wonderful. It gives you a different perspective when you've been in practice a long time. Exactly, exactly. So, so Susan, you know, I'm sure you've listened to a bunch of my shows, so you know that I always like to start with the back story. Um, where did, it may seem like an obvious question, but I'm going to still ask it because, Yes, for the reason why you've put a lot of energy into this. You know, where did your interest in love, dating, and sex come from? Well, you know, there was this young woman who's the daughter of one of my dearest childhood friends. She went off to college and called me for dating advice. And she's like, Susan, the guys are asking me to come over and hang out. What does that mean? And even though, you know, I was supposed to be the expert and know these things, I really wasn't sure. Did, did they just want to be friends? Was this a romance? Or, or were they just looking for a hookup? So, and she wasn't interested in casual sex. And as she soon found out, the guys at her college weren't really interested in taking a girl out to dinner and getting to know her. And she was, she was very disappointed. And I loved college dating, so it really kind of broke my heart she wasn't going to have that experience. Wow. And I yeah. started to wonder what was going on. And, you know, had dating become totally passe? And I thought, this just isn't what we had in mind with the women's movement and the sexual revolution. We thought women would be treated better when we were seen as equals. Not that a lot of men were just taking casual sex for granted. Mm -hmm. So, and, you know, I had seen this in my practice with women letting themselves be taken for granted and, and ended up confused and heartbroken. So when Emma said to me, Susan, you have to do something about this, mm -hmm. I thought she was right. And that somebody really needed to take a stand. And as a psychiatrist and a single person, I thought, you know, I have a unique perspective on this. I can probably figure out how we got here and what we can do about it. Yeah. 
And, and for those of you listening, I, I really want to say there's, there's, there's a really big continuum we're, we're talking about, and and uh, we're not going to be focusing, as, as some of you know, I've, I've, I have a long history around um, uh, in my practice with working with people who have been victims of sexual violence. I was on the Sexual Exploitation Prevention Committee at, at UNLV in Las Vegas, and then I was a chair of the Sexual Assault uh, Committee, subcommittee, and have also even done some research uh, some pretty interesting research around the topic, but I want to just point out that this is, uh, while we're not focusing on the sexual assault and, and specifically, you know, the uh, you know sexual exploitation per se, um, some of the things we'll be talking about today uh, may be may actually um, contribute to the uh, outcome of that, and so I just want to plant that seed and, and for you to take care of yourself as you're listening to today's show uh, because um, you may have had some experiences that you thought were innocent like, you know, like Susan's, uh, you know, niece may have had uh, where, you know, something she thought was innocent maybe or that you thought was innocent maybe turned into something that maybe wasn't really what you wanted and and um, the integrity and, and, and your ability to honor your body um, was compromised. So I just want to put that out. Put out I hope that's okay, Susan. Actually, I'm really delighted that you brought that up because I'm really concerned that that's part of the problem. Mm-hmm. With um, that, this is all part of the problem, and you know they're they're trying to study it, and a lot of young women are feeling so pressured to have sex. They're a little unclear of where where their boundaries are, and that mm-hmm. can contribute to all this confusion. Yeah, and, and, you know, I think we're going to be talking more about that, too, and about um, that it's okay to have boundaries, so, so so we'll get to that. But, you know, you know talking about, you're uh, talking about you and I both, we're, we're living through a lot of this sexual revolution that's, that it was the 60s and 70s and, and the women's movement, and we felt so good about, you know, the sexual liberation, and, and you know, a lot of really positive things seem to be happening, and, and redefining, um, taking women out of the place of, of uh, uh, you know, really where, you know, I think you talk about as well, you know, where women are seen as, you know, in really dark ways if they had any any sexual interest, let alone sexual activity. Um, but the, the pendulum sw- uh, kind of swung. So can you talk a little bit about some of the changes that you've noticed um, as, you know, as a professional, but, you know, in, in any, any realm here, uh, and about how we think about sexuality now and, and uh, you know, this changes over the past few decades. I would love to. You know, I, I think the women's movement and the sexual revolution happened kind of at the same time because the birth control pill came out around that. So here we've got women feeling, you know, so much more empowered than they had been. I mean, if it wasn't for... The women's movement, maybe I wouldn't even be a psychiatrist today. I mean, we made huge Mm -hmm. advances. So all those things are good, but I think we, we kind of got confused with so much change happening at once because the sexual revolution promised us more choices. But in some ways, we're just as confused as ever because if you're going from, if you have sex before marriage, you're a tramp to Mm -hmm. today, if you're a virgin, you're a prude. Mm-hmm. You know, that's losing the liberation we were fighting for. And so many right. girls and it, today they're, they're ashamed of being a virgin, like they've got to get rid of it. And mm-hmm. like there's a stigma against it. And I, I, I think that's where the problem lies. We want people making choices based on what's right for them as individuals. And that's why I think we need some kind of revolution to make that the focus instead of just more rules. And I think part of that got confused with what empowerment is for women because there's so many women saying, well, casual sex and asking men out, that gives women power. But it doesn't always give women power. Mm -hmm. Real power is being treated well by men. There are plenty of women who go have casual sex with a guy and they don't feel treated very well. So I think I think we just need to be more focused on ourselves as individuals instead of thinking about, you know, how we're supposed to be a modern woman. Because everybody's different. Yeah. Yeah, and that desire to grow up. But but again, it even it's it's not this 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 current. Uh, 
pendulum shift swing is, is not just, I mean, it's most profoundly, I think, impacting uh, teenagers, young adults, young women especially. Uh, but I see it in my practice with, with women who are well over, you know, well into the 30s, 40s, 50s, you know, uh, and maybe they've, they've, gone through, they've gone through a divorce or, or maybe they still are seeking someone and, and really, and I don't know about you, but I see a lot of people who are in that place of, of a lot of casual sex, um, and it's just going on and on and on, but nothing meaningful developing. And then they're getting into their 30s, mid, late 30s, and maybe even approaching 40s and, or into their 40s. And they still haven't found a meaningful relationship. And as you were saying, you know, someone who uh, treats them well. Uh, and then they're thinking, God, I thought I, I always thought I wanted to be a mom, but, but they got into this, this trance of, of, uh, of not taking things, you know, just, just not being treated well and, and, you know, getting swept, I think, in this tsunami of the sexual shifts that we're seeing. And, and what, have, what have you noticed, uh, Susan? I, I agree with you. I see it in women of every age. Um, so I don't think it's just in the young people, but I'm much more concerned about, um, teenagers and young women. I don't, I don't know if you know this recent study that just came out where they're, they're saying that the rate of teenage depression in girls has gone up way higher than in boys. And one study I looked at said it's over 30% of girls have been depressed uh, at some point in their lifetime. And so they're still really young, and some huge percentage have had it. So um, I'm just worried that our culture is becoming more and more toxic for girls and women and that, you know, we have an opportunity to change it. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's, there's so many factors, you know. And, you know on this show we talk about other things with diet as well and nutrition uh, and, and you know, relationships and, and the environment. And there's so many factors, and, I, and I'm totally with you. You know, we, we do have a chance to, to kind of change it. So, so on that note, can you talk a little bit about, um, you know, this when you talk about this new sexual revolution for women, uh, I, I like to say for women and men because it, it all is right. uh, working together in this. Um, can you talk a little bit about what that means and, and also maybe how it's different than, than a resurgence of the age-old, what I like to think of as courtship, you know, because I think that there's some, some overlap, but there's some distinctive differences uh, with what you're proposing. I would love to do that. So, so I think the idea is to figure out when you have an option, right? That's why I came up with guidelines, the five guidelines of being your own brand of sexy. So one is you always have a choice because I think sometimes we don't realize when we have a choice that maybe, you know, we don't have to decide quickly about a man or, or we might be able to say no and we don't even think we have that option, um, especially if your friends are telling you something. You know, it's great to have friends, and when you have single friends, sometimes they give you advice that may not be the right thing for you. They may be well-meaning. It may work for them. But knowing that you have an option and, you know, you, you can look into your heart and decide for yourself, I think is big. And um, and and to be aware of the second point is to be aware of all the media and peer pressure kind of things. Three is slow can be sexy because I think we have this three date rule in our culture that that pressures. I I still am hearing about it in my practice that these women feel like they've got to decide in three dates if they're going to have sex with a new man. But that's not really long enough to know if. Maybe he can be trusted if you're on the same page. And so that can cause a lot of problems when you feel like, oh, I'm in a hurry to decide instead of I'm going to take my time and see what happens. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think the other um, factors in this about getting what you want are really about um, knowing that your voice matters and that you can stand up for what you want. And if the man isn't comfortable with whatever it is, like if you say to a guy, I'm not interested in casual sex or, you know, it's not my thing or something, if you feel like you can say that, that's actually expressing your needs and who you are, and if, if he disappears because of that, well, that's okay. Maybe he, that's all he was looking for was sex. So I think a lot of women are kind of afraid 
to say what they want or, or where they're at, and I think those kind of things really help. It does, it does maybe scare men off or they lose interest. It's true, but maybe that's not the right guy for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, there's we it, it, an overlay which we won't be able to get into detail here, folks. Is is that um, there's there's an overlap of of our relationship with attachment, and 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 I think in our culture we've been there's been some real uh, in, you know impacts on the on attachment, and it's making people more desperate. And in that desire to, the fear of losing love or attachment or connection, and people will do things that um, otherwise they wouldn't really want to do. Anyway, we're going to talk more about this, but we need to go to a break already, folks. Um, we're going to have more with Susan talking about the hookup culture is what we're, we're, we're already leaning into a bit, and how to avoid getting burned uh, by players, hello, um, and what and when to have sex with a, a new partner. You know, if not after the, if the three-date rule isn't relevant, when, you know, what's, what, what are some guidelines here? So more with uh, Susan after the break. Being inspired by a speaker while learning everyday positive information that you can use to help your life is exactly what Dr. Teresa Nicasio does when she speaks in front of your group. From healthcare professionals to special needs parenting and everything in between, Dr. Teresa Nicasio can customize topics for your group on everything from health to psychology. To book Dr. Teresa Nicasio as a speaker for your group, visit yumfoodforliving.com or call 604-445-6463. That's 604 604- Four four five six four six three. For all your live or pre-recorded webcasting needs, come to earthchannel.com. Get your web-based message out to a select group or the whole world. It's easy. A pioneer in webcasting, earthchannel.com provides the best products and services to big corporations and government users. And now, this same technology is available to you. They have the best Earthcast encoders, servers, and products to meet your technical needs. But wait, don't want to mess with technical stress? No problem. They'll do it for you. EarthChannel.com is your answer. You can use webcasting for lots of things like advertising, marketing, customer support, training, and don't forget, web radio and TV. In fact, you're listening to a live EarthCast right now. So come to EarthChannel.com. Actualize your audio or video webcasting needs today. You can't beat the friendly service or the price. Call EarthChannel.com at 1-800-849-8978. That's 1-800-849-8978. YumFoodForLiving.com is the place to get easy, allergy-free recipes, all free of sugar, gluten, and dairy. But that's not all you'll get when you visit YumFoodForLiving.com. You'll get resources for all kinds of things like wellness articles, videos, podcasts, a blog, all to help you create easy, healthy living. There's even a 50-page downloadable book introducing you to the philosophy of yum. Don't wait. Visit YumFoodForLiving.com. YumFoodForLiving.com. That's YumFoodForLiving.com. If you like to spend your television viewing time learning about some of the things that you may have missed in history class, or if history was your favorite subject, then you should check out the link to the History Channel on the HealthyLife.net advertiser page. Order DVD sets by series or by subject matter right from our homepage while you still enjoy your favorite HealthyLife.net show. You're listening to HealthyLife.net, the radio network that brings positive talk with positive change to make your world a little better. Welcome back to the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show. For those of you who are just joining us on today's show, we're talking with multi-award winning author of Be Your Own Brand of Sexy, psychiatrist Dr. Susan Edelman. And um, uh, before the break, we were talking a little bit about, about uh, you know, some of the changes in, you know, around sexuality and our relationship with our bodies and such. But Susan, you know, on that, on that note of what may be um, is, is, is some of the undercurrent of, of what we're seeing. Can you talk a little bit about what, you know, from your practice or your experience, what, what you think that people are really wanting from a relationship or from relationships in general? Well, I think people want connection. I think people want to feel desirable. And I think, I think it gets a little 
complicated when you for women. You know, they they've got men's desire figured out. They've got Viagra and all that, but women's desire is way more complicated. So mm. we really want to be desired. We want to feel attractive, and when you have so much pressure in your culture to look good, you know, that's a really important piece. But if that's the only piece you've got, sometimes women can feel really disappointed because they also want to be cared about and they want their feelings to matter. So that's why some of these hookup situations don't work out so well. And a lot of women think, well, they should just brush those feelings aside and it should be no big deal. But I think for a lot of women, it's painful. And, mm-hmm. and and they're really disappointed with it. Um, so some of them don't do it anymore because of that, and others still kind of get into this routine where that's where they are, even though it's not so satisfying. Yeah. I've, I've been asked, I can't tell you how many times I've been asked, what's wrong with me that I get so attached when I have sex? You know, I'm a modern woman. This shouldn't bother me. So, you know, this is human beings are built for attachment. So there's nothing yeah. wrong with people who get attached. It's normal. Mm-hmm. Well, it's not only normal. It's it's actually healthy, <laughs> yeah. right? Right. Uh, but you know, it's really interesting. I last week I was so lucky. I got to meet uh, John Gray for the first time. He's the guy who wrote uh, Men Are from Mars, Women from Venus. <laughs> And I'd never seen him speak in, you know, in person. And what a, a delightful person. But one of the things he was talking about, you know, and sometimes I've, you know, I've, I've had a little reticence about, about some of his message because it is a bit, you know, a fair bit of gender typing. But, you know, there's a lot of things that he says that are actually bang on in terms of gender and gender typing. Um, but also, even if it's not, it can, it brings up some interesting um, reflections. But so heartfelt and heart-based. And some of what you're talking about in terms of with women and women's, you know, sexuality and, you know, and the desire to feel cared about, he really talks a lot about kind of the psychology and, 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 and a lot of it, I think, goes to that primitive place of, of having children and, you know, there's, there's reasons why these things happen. But the hookup culture doesn't really, it's not really congruent with, with any of that. And and I'm actually wondering if that's part of why I would why I also see and you may see as well is, is when women have been in a relationship and maybe not even that long a time they start not wanting having sex at all or anything sexual in their relationship and they just pull away and it becomes that becomes a whole other conversation. Well, there's there's two pieces to this. One is they find that women over time desire sex less than men do in relationships, and I don't know that. That that's just the quality of the relationship. It's something about our sex drive. And maybe it's about women feeling not as desired anymore over time or something. So I think that's a piece of it. And then I also think there's a piece of, of um, women are... Uh, I think the hookup thing has, for women, has become, for some women, has become a, a power, an empowerment kind of thing. So they feel they have more power. And they also, because we're delaying marriage and having children for a while, you know, there's a period of time where people used to get married and have babies. And now that period of time, you know, could be years. So what do you do about sex if you're not going to get married? And a lot of women feel like getting married is kind of a burden for them that they're not ready for. They don't want that kind of commitment. They don't want to devote their time to someone else. So if they can pull it off and if hooking up is is in their emotional sphere, then they feel like, well, that's a good solution to the problem. So some people are saying, well, hooking up is a good thing because it keeps women successful. But plenty of women get married, and they still have careers and and children, and they're very successful. So Mm -hmm. it's an interesting argument, but I don't know that it's necessarily the case because I also think we have the whole fear of missing out. Who who am I going to? end up with, right? Do I want to make a final commitment? There's a lot of a lot of factors to this. Yeah, yeah. And you know, the the fear of commitment is that's 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 another piece. Mm-hmm. Uh, but also, I think this you know, if you can't beat them, join them um, piece around. If this is the only way that you can have that 
feel cared about, if this is the only way you can be touched, if this is the only way you can feel desired and have someone show the, their desire for you, then, okay, I guess I'll do what I need to do, right? I think that, that there's a lot of that going on for the young people. It's like, gosh, I want to, you know, I want romance. I want what I see in the movies. I, you know, I want that. That's, um, and there's the natural, you know, sexual desires that, that particularly young women and going into, well, certainly at least into the 30s. It's not until we get more into our 40s and 50s that I think our, our, our uh, sexual desire, there starts to be more of the hormonal um, implications. Like, you know, Dr. Barb Dupree, she's a menopause specialist. She was on the show talking about some of that. But I think that you're right. Some of the, if people aren't feeling cared about and so forth, that, that might be contributing to the reduced sexual desire that, that we're seeing in younger and younger women. It's a complicated question about yeah. what's going on, but certainly they think that maybe women don't feel desired. They feel like their partner has to be, be with them or something because they have a yeah. commitment. So, yeah. it, And that's why they think, you know, going away somewhere, doing something different can help kind of spark all that. And plus, yeah. if, you, if you do have kids, then, you know, you might be tired. As well, yeah, so, totally. there's a lot of other factors, right? Oh yeah, fatigue's a huge factor. Fatigue and stress. But let's just jump back to this other question that I think is sort of the million dollar question. You're talking about the three date rule, and I've certainly heard about that. And some people they feel like three dates is even a long time to wait. <laughs> is uh, where I'm not sure if that's just where I live, but um, but uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of confusion about you know, when. When do you think it's a good time to have sex with a partner? You know, what are some of the important questions that our listeners uh, can ask themselves before they decide to cross that threshold into into the sexual realm with a new with a new person? I think the most important question to ask is, does he want what I want? Because before you have sex with someone new, you kind of want to know him well enough to know if you have the same goals for the relationship. Do you both want something serious, or is one or both of you looking for a casual fling? And so many people feel awkward about discussing this, and... And if you don't feel like you can bring it up, maybe you're just not ready to have sex because mm -hmm. it's really better to get the answers you need so you aren't sorry later. Mm -hmm. And I think the other question is, you know, how will I feel if we have sex and he disappears? Because, you know, women think they're holding on to a guy by having sex with him like they're afraid they'll get rejected if they don't have sex. Mm -hmm. And then, but the, then the, some of they have sex and they get rejected anyway. So it's kind of another factor to think about before you make your decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so these are, you know, these are having the con these difficult conversations and even conversations about uh, STDs, right? I mean, the herpes, uh, we don't want to get into that, how, how, how uh, rampant that is, but yeah, having conversations about health and, and what you're wanting and making sure you're all on the same wavelength is, this is about, this is really about self-love and self-care. Um, and, uh, and, you know, I know we want to get into the talking about players and, and microwave romances and all that. So we're going to need to take another break though and we can, we can start off with some of that when we come back. So after the break, Dr. Susan is going to, um, share with us a bit about players and, um, and and what she calls the uh, microwave romance and how you can maybe find a nice partner. What are the places you can find someone nice and avoid those troublemakers who, who break your hearts and maybe you know, other, other damaging things. So stick around. We'll be right back. There's a book that makes it so easy to embrace a healthy, gluten-free lifestyle. Even kids will like it. Filled with heartwarming stories, food as medicine health tips, easy allergy-free recipes, and creative culinary inventions, the award-winning book Yum! by Dr. Teresa Nicasio is your source for all of this and more. So make gluten-free living easy, tasty, and fun. Get Yum! plant-based recipes for a gluten-free diet at Amazon.com or visit YumFoodForLiving.com. That's YumFoodForLiving.com. 
What does HealthyLife.net and Amazon.com have in common? Well, they're both available on the Internet. They both give great value. But most important, most of our positive program hosts and guests are accomplished authors. And their books are available from, you got it, Amazon.com. Now it even gets better than that. Because when you're listening on air to a HealthyLife.net host or guest, you can go directly to Amazon.com and you can order your book while you're still listening to your favorite HealthyLife.net program. So when you hear an author you like, go to the homepage of HealthyLife.net and click on Amazon.com. When you have a food allergy or dietary limitation, Dr. Teresa Nicasio knows it's hard to give up the foods you love, so she decided to put on her chef hat and give you affordable, personalized culinary consultations that will light up your taste buds. You'll explore substitute ingredients so you can enjoy your favorite foods again. She'll even help you make food preparation easy and guide you on your path to healthy living. And to get started, all you have to do is call 604-445-6463. That's 604 604- Four four five sixty four sixty three. HealthyLife.net, the positive radio network. YumFoodForLiving.com is the place to get easy, allergy-free recipes, all free of sugar, gluten, and dairy. But that's not all you'll get when you visit YumFoodForLiving.com. You'll get resources for all kinds of things like wellness articles, videos, podcasts, a blog, all to help you create easy, healthy living. There's even a 50-page downloadable book introducing you to the philosophy of yum. Don't wait. Visit yumfoodforliving.com. Yumfoodforliving.com. That's yumfoodforliving.com. HealthyLife.net, the positive radio network. Welcome back to the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show. Today we're talking with the uh, best uh, selling author, of, award winning author of Be Your Own Brand of Sexy, Dr. Susan Edelman. And um, you know, before we left off, we were talking a little bit about about you know hookups and you know, like one night stands and what is it we're really wanting. And um, you know when is it you know the idea of when is it a good time to to have sex with someone and, and uh, you know, thinking about that. And, um, you know, why don't we just start up with this and, and talking about uh, maybe maybe if you could talk a little bit about what you call a microwave romance. <laughs> I'd love to do that. Yeah, a microwave romance is one that a romance that progresses at lightning speed and then it typically explodes in your face. <laughs> this is so <laughs> common, right? <laughs> Otherwise, yeah, maybe not want, a, right? a crash and burn relationship or something like that. But it's it's just a really common thing because people don't necessarily try and figure out if they're compatible or they're looking for the same things at all, so it all just explodes. I mean, great relationships, just they take time to evolve. And sometimes you just can't rush that process. Mm-hmm. But we see it in the movies, right? We mm-hmm. see it in the movies. It happens all the time. So we think that's, that should be the way it, it's going to happen for me, too. Mm-hmm. Kind of that hot and steamy, you know, just like boom, you know, wham, bam, but it's, uh, it just carries on, and that's, that's the beginning of, of the uh, happily ever after story. <laughs> but that doesn't happen in real life. Well, I hope everybody knows that movie producers and TV producers are mostly men. You know, there's very few women represented in it, so they're not really making stories about women empowerment. They're really trying to, you know, make money, sex sells. So we see this and we think, what's wrong with me that I don't look like that? Or what's wrong with me that I'm not having lots of sex? Mm-hmm. Right? And, but these are men making these movies. It's not really about women. Mm-hmm. About real women. Yeah, and, and, and why am I not enjoying it as much as these women seem yeah. to be enjoying this little journey? Um, speaking of that, you know, uh, and, and to the journey and um, um, and even to some degree maybe is kind of related, but not necessarily the, the microwave romance. Can you talk a little bit about players and um, why do you think they're so successful at stealing people's hearts, especially vulnerable people um, who are really longing for love? Well, you know, I think it's true for kind of narcissistic men as well as players. They can be very charming and attractive. And, you know, think about a player. He's gone out with a lot of women. He knows what works, mm-hmm. right? So they get they get very good at knowing, you know, what lines will work. And and sometimes they really like women, right? So they're, they can be very engaging. 
And Mm -hmm. so I think the most important thing is to listen to your instincts because I think a lot of times women just, they kind of blindly go into this and think, well, he's a great guy, he's this and this and this, and they don't necessarily listen to the nagging little thoughts that are going on in their head, like he looked at another woman, you know, while you're talking on your first date, or with a narcissistic man that maybe he's doing all the talking, or he's rude to the waitress. So we tend to kind of overlook that because it seems like we're having such a great interaction, but then over time it often doesn't work out very well. Yeah, and and that instinct piece, you know, for both both Susan and I are are are, are you know mental health professionals for a very long time, and I've, I I think you have you've been a professor, so I have as well, um, teaching therapists about how to do therapy. And it's, I just want to just make this comment because it sort of relates to the three date rule idea that even as a psychologist or as a psychiatrist, sometimes we don't even, you know, if someone's access to, well, if, a, if someone's say, narcissistic or um, has, has, you know, very significant you know, personality traits that maybe make it so that they are, could be more dangerous or problematic. It, a lot of times even pro- trained professionals don't know within three sessions uh, or more. It, sometimes it doesn't really show itself till age. But I'd like to just point that out, that don't feel like you're stupid uh, or there's something wrong with you if you um, believe someone because, like, like, like Dr. Susan's mentioning, they, you know, people can be very charming, know exactly what your vulnerable places are, what you want to hear, and um, be good at sales. And so before you get yourself uh, sucked into something, uh, do you have a few tips uh, you mentioned about listening to your gut? Are there any other tips that you have, uh, Dr. Susan, about ways that people can protect their hearts? I know you have a whole chapter about that in the book. Oh, absolutely. You know, uh, I think one of the most important things is to, to recognize that actions speak louder than words. So no matter what kind of flowery language he's using or if he's telling you he wants, you know, a serious relationship, he's looking to get married or whatever it is, I mean, you've really got to look at how he's acting. Does he actually contact you? Does he want to see you on Saturday night? You know, I think those are the, you know, is he not giving you um, information about him that you need to know? Does he not want you to meet his friends? You've really got to look at the whole picture and and try and, and be aware of what he's doing, not just what he's saying, because both these guys, players and narcissists, can be really good at talking. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So on the other flip side of the coin, this is related to a question that came in for um, someone specifically requested. How do you find someone who's not a player or a narcissist? How do you find, uh, you know, what, what do you recommend to your patients? You know, where do you find uh, a nice a nice partner, right? What what, um, what do you recommend? I you have several that? suggestions. But, but let me say first yes. that it's very, very important to not assume that just because you do any of these things, these people aren't going to be a player or a narcissist, right? Okay. You still have to be able to kind of weed people out who aren't going to work out for you. But mm-hmm. but I do have some great ideas. I, I think first, you know, sometimes people don't realize that maybe their friends know somebody nice to fix them up with. So you can ask your friends. Some women, they'll have a party, and all their single girlfriends will bring up an eligible man who maybe they don't want to date. Um, That's a great idea. You can meet someone at church. And I think there's a lot to be said for online dating, but you have to be super protective of yourself. I have several blog posts on my website about how to do that because I don't think the dating sites are really they just want people to meet. They don't necessarily want you to, you know, meet a great guy who you're going to have a good relationship with. They just kind of want people to meet each other. So they tell women these things that I don't know that are necessarily true. Like, you know, the more you contact them, the more likely you'll have a date. They say that's true, but that doesn't necessarily mean he'll be a nice guy or that it'll go farther than one date. So you just have to be a little wary on the online sites, but I do think they're a fact that plenty of people meet their partners that way. 
Absolutely. And we're going to be hearing a few more tips from um, Dr. Susan after the break. So uh, we're going to hear more about that and, and a little bit about her books. And um, and uh, there might be a couple other bonus things that we really want to focus on. So don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. Being inspired by a speaker while learning everyday positive information that you can use to help your life is exactly what Dr. Teresa Nicasio does when she speaks in front of your group. From healthcare professionals to special needs parenting and everything in between, Dr. Teresa Nicasio can customize topics for your group on everything from health to psychology. To book Dr. Teresa Nicasio as a speaker for your group, visit yumfoodforliving.com or call 604-445-6463. That's 604 604- Four four five six four six three. If you're like the 8 out of 10 women that say finding genes that fit is a problem, well, your problem is solved. Lee Genes has done extensive research, and they have genes that fit. There's even an online Lee Fit Finder, so you can find the right fit for you. Imagine jeans that instantly slim you with a custom fit and no gap waistband. And guys, kids, Lee has jeans for you, too. Click through to Lee's Jeans on the HealthyLife.net advertiser page and get what fits. When you have a food allergy or dietary limitation, Dr. Teresa Nicasio knows it's hard to give up the foods you love, so she decided to put on her chef hat and give you affordable, personalized culinary consultations that will light up your taste buds. You'll explore a substitute ingredient so you can enjoy your favorite foods again. She'll even help you make food preparation easy and guide you on your path to healthy living. And to get started, all you have to do is call 604-445-6463. That's 604-445-6463. There's a book that makes it so easy to embrace a healthy, gluten-free lifestyle, even kids will like it. Filled with heartwarming stories, food as medicine health tips, easy allergy-free recipes, and creative culinary inventions, the award-winning book Yum! by Dr. Teresa Nicasio is your source for all of this and more. So make gluten-free living easy, tasty, and fun. Get Yum! Plant-Based Recipes for a Gluten-Free Diet at Amazon.com or visit YumFoodForLiving.com. That's YumFoodForLiving.com. Radio your way. HealthyLife.net. Welcome back. You're listening to the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show. This is a place where we celebrate life, love, and kindness while addressing the real challenges that are a natural part of living, like finding life-giving love and romance, um, as we're talking about today with psychiatrist and award-winning author, Dr. Susan Edelman. Um, before I go further, Susan, can you just mention about the free gift that you have? Um, you have a free quiz that uh, I have a link for on, on Dr. Dr. Susan's um, you go to TeresaNicasio.com website, you'll see I have a page for each of the shows, each of the guests. Uh, if you click on her page, you'll see that um, there's a link for a free quiz. Can you talk a little bit about that and, and maybe what you're doing with that? Definitely. So there's a quiz there where you can find out if you're being your own brand of sexy, which means doing what's right for you in these kind of dating and relationship situations. So it's, it's kind of a mini quiz from my book. So it can kind of help you figure out, are are you doing what's best for you? Are you swayed by somebody else or doing what you think a modern woman should do? So it's kind of a fun quiz, and and it it can help get you started on this process of figuring out how to develop your instincts and intuition and helping your confidence to to move forward to find to find the kind of relationship you want, whatever it is. Good. And if you're if you're a man or if you're in a same sex relationship, still do it. Just change the language if you need to. Just shift it up a bit. I've had um, several men it. take this quiz, yeah. and they get a big kick out of it too, because it's more kind of about your personality. Mm-hmm. Nice. Nice. So, 
So Susan, as Dr. Susan has mentioned a couple times, uh, she's got a, a, a website. She's, she writes some really great articles on there. It's a great resource. And, again, the link for her website is on the truthinacostia.com page. But, um, Susan, what's, what's your website just to give people if they happen to want to write it down right now or, or look it up right now? What is, what's so it, what's it's beyourownbrandisexy.com, mm-hmm. and it's got – a couple of years worth of blog articles where we're talking about all kinds of things that maybe we haven't gotten to today, like how to communicate better, and I have a, a number of things about fat shaming and, you know, trying to improve your confidence in your body and your love of yourself because I don't think we're talking enough about inner beauty in these dialogues we're having now. I mean, women are making progress and trying to accept their bodies, but we're forgetting about our inner beauty in this conversation, which I think is much more important. Yeah, and, and, and this is uh, the reason why this book has won 14 awards. I'm telling you, it's it's packed with good, I mean, quality content, folks. It's and it's like three. I'm, I have it in front of me right now. I'm just looking. I think 237 pages, if you include the um, in the index. It's it's really uh, it's it's not just a fluff book. It's not you know just like a Cosmo you know questionnaire. This is based on on real real experience, real um, you know even research and and so forth around a relationship. So. So this book is, you're going to want to check it out. I, I'm super excited that you that, that Dr. Susan put this out. And when, when it was proposed to me about, uh, about you being on the show, Susan, when I looked in the book, I was very, very pleased because I get a lot of requests for people who want to be on the show. And uh, it's, it's a nice, it's a little different angle that uh, on the surface it may not seem like it is, but it really is, and it, and it goes to practical. That's true. I've been told a lot of people when they saw the title, they went, what is this book? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's way like deeper Cosmo, than it right? It's like a Cosmo. It's like a Cosmo art, uh, title, but it really it goes way deeper. It's it's so beautiful, beautifully done. Thank you. Um, can you you also have another book um, that is, is more of a how-to book? Do you want to just mention that real quick? Yeah. About? So there's an e-book called What to Say to Men on a Date. So this is a way, another approach to take to you know where you want to start in this process. It's kind of short and sweet and helps you figure out. The, you know, the questions men ask that often stump us on dates, right? How do we figure out what, how to say no or how to be a little playful in, in ways that will be effective but also get us what we want? And yeah. sometimes when you're kind of stumped on a date, you don't know what to say. So it gives you like a, a number of different responses. So whatever you choose, that's your personality. Right. So I haven't actually seen that book, but I love this idea. It reminds me of your, your, your niece, Emma, right? Like, you know, it's like almost like calling Dr. Susan, like, Auntie Susan, um, what, what should I do now? It's like being in the bathroom, you know, like, I'm going to stay this book. But uh, the idea that, that uh, you put it as an e-book so people can just go into the washroom and, and pull it up on your phone if you need to, if you're, like, in a situation. It's, I love that so kind of like, a, you know, your, your first aid kit. Um, but again, I haven't, you haven't seen it. I can't, I can't vouch for what I specifically, you know, details about it, but something to, something to think about, and it's really, really accessible and inexpensive, and, and you can just have it right there for you. Um, if you were to have one takeaway, Susan, from today that you share with our listeners, you know, what would, what would you want to, what, what do you want to say to our, our, our beautiful people who are listening today? Well, you know, I think my most important takeaway is that your heart is very precious and so it's important to protect it and our culture is not really supporting that today so it's important to take some kind of action today to for yourself in this process because it's hard to fight a culture i mean that's why i want a revolution so we can change the culture to make it more about you figuring out what's right for you but right now you're fighting all these influences that aren't supporting you in that so whether it's to get a mentor who's already in a good relationship that can help you guide you or to get a therapist or to buy a book or something to start you on the process to mm-hmm. of, commitment toward what you want, because I think so many people might listen to a program and really mean well, but then it's just easy to kind of go back in your own old ways. So mm-hmm. so I think what you want to do is, is do something to change the direction this is headed, or has been headed, if it's not working for you. 
No, oh, that sounds fantastic, Dad. Do something nice for yourself. Do something kind and honoring. All right. Well, Susan, it's time to wrap up. Thank you so much for joining us today. I had a wonderful time. Thank you so much for having me on your show. You're so welcome. And for all of you listening today, I hope you've also enjoyed the show and, and you got a few things for food for thought and um, um, some inspiration. And be sure to tune in next week when best-selling author and holistic nutrition coach Ricky Heller is going to be with us talking about candida, that nasty candida overgrowth, and what you can do about it. She was on the worst of that. She was on the other side of it. it was ugly, ugly, ugly. So she gets it, and she's committed her her life now to helping others not have to suffer so much um, and uh, is, is providing resources and, and is going to talk about a lot of those things on the show uh, next week. Anyway, I'm Teresa, and this has been the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show. Until next time, have a fantastic week, and and as Susan, Dr. Susan is talking about, take care of you. Do something. It doesn't have to be related to our topic today. Just do something nice for yourself. All right. We'll we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. There's a book that makes it so easy to embrace a healthy, gluten-free lifestyle, even kids will like it. Filled with heartwarming stories, food as medicine health tips, easy allergy-free recipes, and creative culinary inventions, the award-winning book, Yum! by Dr. Teresa Nicasio, is your source for all of this and more. So make gluten-free living easy, tasty, and fun. Get Yum! plant-based recipes for a gluten-free diet at Amazon.com or visit yumfoodforliving.com. That's yumfoodforliving.com. Shh! Over here. Here's a secret for a virus-free computer. ESET. They've been a pioneer in the antivirus industry for over 25 years. 25 years of innovative, top-rated antivirus protection. ESET's award-winning security solutions provide a safe online experience for over 100 million home and business computer owners. They are so affordable, fast, and simple to use. So be gone, you blue screen of death. ESET's on my computer. If it's not on yours, visit HealthyLife.net's advertiser page and click on ESET now. When you have a food allergy or dietary limitation, Dr. Teresa Nicasio knows it's hard to give up the foods you love, so she decided to put on her chef hat and give you affordable, personalized culinary consultations that will light up your taste buds. You'll explore a substitute ingredients so you can enjoy your favorite foods again. She'll even help you make food preparation easy and guide you on your path to healthy living. And to get started, all you have to do is call 604-445-6463. That's 604 604- 445-6463. HealthyLife.net, where positive overcomes negative.